Hello everyone, welcome to the Diplomacy course. We will begin with Chapter 1, Definition and Importance of Diplomacy. In this chapter, we will firstly try to understand what diplomacy is. Then, we will talk about diplomatic relations, and lastly, the types of diplomacy. What is diplomacy? Let's try to answer this question. Diplomacy has a very long history through which it changed in terms of practice and content and diversified. This is an important indicator that there has been a constant need for diplomacy and that diplomacy, evolving and adjusting itself to changing international conditions, has never lost its significance. Etymologically speaking, diplomacy comes from the combination of Greek word diploma, meaning something folded in two, a paper, which gives certain privileges to its holder. Oxford English Dictionary defines diplomacy as the profession, activity, or skill of managing international relations, typically by a country's representatives abroad. More detailed definitions are made by scholars who provide a significant literature on diplomacy. In modern international relations, it is no longer possible to define diplomacy only in terms of foreign policy or political relations between states that is carried out by statesmen and diplomats. The most important function of diplomacy, regardless of its scope or its actors, is communication. In a sense, diplomacy is communication itself. Another major function of diplomacy is representation. The main instrument of representation is embassies, and its main actors are ambassadors, consulates, attaches, and other diplomatic personnel. Let's move on to diplomatic relations. Diplomacy has a wide scope with many different actors. Even when states are accepted as the main actor of diplomacy, diplomacy takes shapes depending on the characteristics of the state. Besides the debate over whether the sovereign states are less powerful and hence less important has been on the agenda of international relations for a long time and remains unconcluded. In very broad terms, it is possible to separate diplomatic relations between states into two, depending on the number of actors, as bilateral diplomacy and multilateral diplomacy. Whereas bilateral diplomacy defines relations between two states, multilateral diplomacy defines the relations between more than two such actors. Having diplomatic relations with a state does not necessarily mean having good relations. States may sometimes have very bad relations or have periods of crises and even get involved in small-scale armed conflicts but still carry on their diplomatic relations. Multilateral diplomacy is an outcome of modern diplomacy which came to exist after the Congress of Westphalia and usually functions through conferences. An important step towards multilateral diplomacy was the establishment of League of Nations following the end of the First World War. What was novel about the League of Nations, especially in terms of diplomacy, was that it served as permanent base for multilateral diplomacy which used to be carried out through conferences that met for once and for some days only. A great power is generally described as a state that has influence in international relations. This influence mostly derives from state capabilities such as territory, strategic position and geographical extent, population, resources, military strength, political stability and strong economy. The term middle power refers to the states which have neither the capacity nor the claim to be great power but have more strength and influence than the small states. Being a small state means to have relatively less power in the international system. Now we can talk about the types of diplomacy. The constantly widening world of diplomacy requires different methods applied to different cases. This has led to the formulation of different types of diplomacy. There is a big variety of diplomacies in this sense. It is to everyone's knowledge that a major part of diplomacy is carried out in secrecy. Secret diplomacy refers to diplomatic engagements that take place without the knowledge of the public.
However, it does not mean that the diplomatic meetings that occur behind closed doors are secret diplomacy. What is meant by secret diplomacy is that the very existence of certain diplomatic meetings are kept secret from domestic and foreign publics. In some cases, although the existence of the diplomatic engagement is not denied, it is intentionally kept away from the attention of the public. Conference diplomacy refers to the multilateral diplomatic negotiations that take place in international conferences. But this does not necessarily mean that all negotiations also occur with the participation of all actors. Bilateral or limited multilateral negotiations also take place among the participants of conference diplomacy. Coercive diplomacy defines the use of limited force or the threat of using force in diplomatic relations with the aim of achieving desired ends. This makes coercive diplomacy a type of engagement that differs from the generally accepted conceptualization that diplomacy involves peaceful means in interstate relations. The success of coercive diplomacy depends on the outcomes that are aimed and the way that it is used. Crisis diplomacy defines the international efforts to manage and solve a crisis. The need for crisis diplomacy has increased significantly since the world has become more interconnected, and a crisis occurring in one region of the world becomes the concern of other states on both regional and international level. New types of global crises, such as humanitarian, economic, environmental, or health crises, necessitate the involvement of many state and non-state actors in order to reach a solution. Track 2 diplomacy refers to the unofficial diplomatic activity presupposing that official diplomacy is the track 1. Since it differs from official diplomacy, its actors are also not state officials. NGOs, local leaders, conflict resolution practitioners, universities, academics, students can all be actors of track 2 diplomacy. Economic diplomacy is the implementation of foreign policy by using economic means to achieve political goals or it is a strategy to promote foreign policy objectives. More specifically, it can be the use of diplomatic means to promote and achieve economic objectives, which may even be implicit in the overall planning of the foreign policy of a state. Public diplomacy defines the diplomatic communication between traditional actors of diplomacy and the public. By public, it is meant foreign publics and the international community as a whole, but in certain cases, domestic public also becomes the audience of public diplomacy. Digital diplomacy is one of the newest modes of diplomacy. It is about the technological developments that have transforming effects on diplomacy. It has been challenging for traditional diplomacy in terms of its instruments and institutions, but it also has provided new ones. Digital diplomacy has developed in several stages defined by vision, rapid technological innovations, and organizational adoptions by foreign ministries. The extent to which it has affected diplomacy is a discussion point. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 1 of the Diplomacy Course. Goodbye and see you in our next program, Chapter 2.